to Community Health TV powered by Community Therapy. I'm here with accredited practicing dietitian Grace and today we're speaking about bowel management. So from a dietitian's perspective, knowing that we support older adults, people living with disabilities, what is bowel management? Tell us a little bit about yes, that. This is actually my favourite topic, oh, Scott. Is it? it is, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so in terms of bowel management, it may refer to constipation. So that may be defined by perhaps not opening our bowels or opening our bowels less than three times a week. Um, it may be passing hard stools or experiencing straining or incomplete evacuation on the toilet. Um, we also look with bowel management diarrhea as well. So that is loose bowel motions, um, usually quite frequently across the day. That can vary for anyone. It could be um, three times or more a day. And with bowel management as well, it could be looking at more so gut health in that too. So um, making sure that we've got a healthy gut to have a healthy bowel. Um, and in that as well, we do, I guess in bowel management, we do talk a lot about the Bristol stool chart. So what's a healthy poo? Mm -hmm. um, and typically, so there's type one to type seven on the Bristol stool chart, usually type three to four is the healthy stool, which is usually what we're aiming for mm. overall. What are some conditions that people live with that maybe are more associated with challenges with bowel management, knowing that I know we support older adults and people with disabilities, but this bowel management is something across the lifespan. So yeah. what are some key conditions that you're often coming across that people have bowel management as a key care need? Um, typically, so... It's a big question. It is a big <laughs> question, yeah. Um, so I guess it does change across our lifespan, um, particularly as we age is one of the factors. So when we look at our bowels, we do look, look at a lot of factors. So things like our fluid intake, our fibre intake and movement. And as we age, we may find that we have a more sedentary lifestyle or if we're living with a disability where we're immobile or sitting a lot or wheelchair bound, um, where we're not getting that movement, it may impact our bowels as well. So certainly um, particular conditions would include, um, for example, Parkinson's disease, motor neurons disease. Um, Somebody that's had a stroke. Yeah, yeah, someone that's had a stroke and other conditions may include irritable bowel syndrome, for example, where we're getting frequent constipation or diarrhea. Um, but there are, yeah, it can happen to anyone. It's not just anyone with a particular condition. Um, it may be someone with a food intolerance, for example, that just hasn't been identified um, for, a, you know, it could be ongoing for years. And that then can impact, you know, one's ability to engage with the community because they may be anxious about needing to go to the bathroom or um, mm. being in pain because they haven't been going yeah. to the bathroom. So it can then flow on yeah. and I don't, is maybe that's a part of what you're passionate about it of that bowel management without being supported well by appropriate health mm -hmm. professionals can then lead to barriers of someone you know yeah. being able to do the things yeah. that they want to be able to do and socialize and things so if somebody's living with you know concerns here obviously they can um, self-refer to a dietitian, link up with their general practitioner or coordinator through aged care and disability programs. But what, how does a family member or another healthcare professional or a coordinator bring up that topic with somebody? What's the question? Like, I'm a physio by background. What would I say as a physio or what would a coordinator say to somebody of, how's your poo? Like, what, yeah. what do they what do I they mean, say? normally I just ask, how are your bowels going? But I can understand that, it, you know, it can be quite a, it's a very personal topic to someone and not like everyone. it's an area of passion for you, so yeah. you feel comfortable yeah. talking about yeah. it. Yeah, and if you're not comfortable talking about it, then, you know, you don't want anyone to feel awkward or uncomfortable mm -hmm. or put in a situation where they don't want to talk about their bowels. So you just start the conversation by going, how is your... I'd say, how are your bowels? Yeah. yeah. And they, um, they say and something. Normally, yeah, yeah, normally quite a lot of people are quite open yeah. um, about it, just knowing, you know, it is a part of our assessment. So perhaps if you are a coordinator or coming from a different profession, whether it be a physio or an OT, it could be just used as part of your assessment. Mm. Look, as part of this, um, I do need to ask how are your bowels? Have you had any concerns and over if, the last... And if they say no, and you, you can maybe follow up and say, 
So no constipation or diarrhea yeah. or I can yeah. maybe hit just another follow-up question. Absolutely. Even asking something as simple as how often do you open your bowels? Yeah. Um, and then you, from there, there should be a flow and effect, whether it's every day or um, every second day. And yeah. is it hard to pass or... Um, you know, if anyone's on any laxative medication, for example, just things like Movicol or Coloxal and Senna, that might be a key indication as well, mm -hmm. particularly for health professionals to look at in terms of if they might be struggling with their bowels. Yeah, it brings up a good point in my mind, like as a physio walking into someone's house knowing that we provide mobile visits visually, like I'm always looking for things. So. That may be that I've looked on someone's medication chart or their Webster pack and seen those medications. Or sometimes I might see um, a bathroom that's maybe not clean mm -hmm. and I can prompt a conversation from there. So if that conversation's come up and maybe a care need being identified there, then how do you say, well, maybe a dietitian helps? Like, what could I say to someone that a dietitian can help and how can they help? What's something I could say? Um, I would certainly ask if their bowels are impacting their day-to-day. -day. So like we mentioned before, it could be impacting someone's ability to go out and socialise. I or, used to go to coffee and now I Yeah, don't. exactly. Or going out for dinner or, you know, playing bingo every week. They no longer go because of the anxiety around their bowels. So in terms of referring to a dietitian, I would probably just state, you know, did you know that a dietitian might be able to assist with your bowels? Um, would you like me to refer? Um, you know, because it sounds like this is a concern to you and we'd really like to help manage this and hopefully improve your quality of life and being able to get back and going out for coffee or playing bingo or whatever it may be. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any good stories of someone you've really helped? Um, oh, there's no preparation. <laughs> like, is there um, someone that had a, a social goal and then they were able to just, you know, feel a lot better or less anxious about that? Yes, I definitely have. And it, it, so I guess as a particular, you know, not giving away names, but this particular individual was living with diarrhoea um, on background of irritable bowel syndrome. Um, and through identifying some of trigger foods, things like um, caffeine intake and um, lactose intolerance as well, by limiting those foods, this particular person was then able to actually go out and play cards with right. in the little retirement village that they lived in, which is an excellent outcome and what yeah, we really want to achieve. Without being anxious that something's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, awesome. So. Really cool. Well, I think we've covered a lot in this episode. Check out the description for some key tips and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.